When you're setting a refrigeration cycle, let's see how some different effects are gonna play on that. We're gonna first talk about an overcharge system, being too much refrigerant in that system. Now I gotta break this down between two parts, a fixed orifice meter device, which is a fixed hole, and also a thermostatic expansion valve or electronic expansion valve that's gonna open and close. We're first gonna talk about a fixed orifice meter device. So let's talk about an overcharge system. Overcharge system means there's extra molecules. There's more molecules of refrigerant. So as we're adding more and more molecules of refrigerant, what do you think the head pressure is gonna do? Now it's trying to push more molecules in that same area. Hopefully you said the head pressure is gonna go up and that would be correct. The head pressure is for sure gonna go up because we have more molecules, we're trying to squish it together. If I put more molecules of air in a tire, the tire pressure goes up. So more molecules of refrigerant, too much refrigerant is gonna cause the pressure to go up. Now what's tied to the head pressure? The saturated temperature, the liquid saturated temperature, the liquid saturated temperature is going to go up as well. So the temperature difference between the refrigerant condensing and the temperature of the air is gonna be much farther apart. Wait, we have a name for that. That's called condenser TD. Some people call it saturated temperature rise and some people call it condensing temperature over ambient or CTOA but that's gonna be a higher condenser temperature difference. So our condenser TD is gonna go up. Let's say we're designed for a 10 to 15 degree temperature difference. Well, as we have more and more molecules, the pressure goes up, the saturated goes up. Now maybe we have a 30 degree temperature difference, the difference between the refrigerant and the air. See how that number affects it. That's a big important factor. Now that that's happening, we have more refrigerant in the condensing unit, so we end up with more subcooled liquid. Well, as we have more subcooled liquid, that pushes our saturation down to a smaller area. So more subcooled liquid, we'll see that our subcooling over here starts to go up. So we end up with our subcooling going up and that gives us a flooded condensing unit. So too much refrigerant in our condensing unit. But wait, that's not all. Now that we have more pressure on the outside, there's more pressure pushing harder on that liquid refrigerant. So we're actually pushing more liquid refrigerant into our evaporator coil. Because we get more liquid refrigerant in our evaporator coil, we start to overfill our evaporator coil, too much saturation. So what that means is our superheated vapor becomes less. As I put more liquid vapor mixture, I get less and less superheat. So our superheated vapor is gonna be lower than our target. Low superheated vapor means that we have a flooded evaporator coil, too much refrigerant in our evaporator coil. But on top of that, as I'm putting more refrigerant in my evaporator coil, also my suction pressure is gonna be going up as well. So our suction pressure is gonna go up, and we know if our suction pressure goes up, our saturated temperature, the temperature of the refrigerant boiling is tied to that. So our saturated temperature is gonna go up also. Now that our saturated temperature has gone up, the air temperature is still gonna be the same. So now we have a higher saturated temperature compared to the air temperature. That means the temperature difference between the refrigerant versus the air is gonna be closer together. So our condenser TD may end up dropping. The other thing you'll see is our evaporator delta T, air in versus air out, will typically get farther apart. So that number is actually gonna go up. And a lot of people they overcharge them because they only look at this number. They think, hey, if I force more refrigerant in that evaporator coil, I'm able to have more saturation and I'm able to absorb more heat. And they are to an extent absorbing some more heat. So now you're taking more heat out of the air. So now you're able to drop the temperature of the air much higher, which is that delta T. But because your saturated temperature is higher, it's also farther away from the dew point, which means less dehumidification. And we know that that's gonna be an issue. Dehumidification is essential for air conditioning. But wait, there's more. Now that we end up with more and more refrigerant in our evaporator coil, it's very easy for us to overfill our evaporator coil. And now we end up with liquid refrigerant running through this suction line. And even if it's not under this condition right now, what happens when those conditions change? The outdoor temperature changes or the indoor temperature starts to change. Because it's a fixed over meter device, it's at the mercy of all of these different conditions. To chart it, we'd have to find our performance data from the manufacturer. But we know that if we overfill that evaporator coil, we start getting liquid refrigerant or a saturated mixture of liquid and vapor to our vapor pump. And what kind of pump is it? It's a vapor pump. It's not a liquid saturated pump, it's only a vapor pump. So now that we're getting liquid refrigerant to our compressor, it starts washing the oil away from the bearings. And now that we have bearings running without any oil, that's gonna be an issue. As well as the liquid refrigerant starts hitting the windings, it starts breaking the windings down, causing that motor to short out, causes the oil to foam, the oil gets into the compressor. Now we're trying to compress all that extra volume of oil 
and we're also trying to possibly compress a liquid, which is causing valve damage. Tons of damage happening on this compressor, and it doesn't happen right away. It takes time for it to happen. So you'll see people say, well, I overcharge them all the time, and I never have no problems. You're still causing damage to the customer's compressor. It doesn't happen right away, but it's still happening. So now that we're doing that, now we're absorbing essentially more heat inside. We're having to reject it outside. So that exaggerates all these issues over here. And you'll typically see a higher condenser delta T on the outside. So that's how overcharge the system is gonna affect a fixed orifice metering device. But wait, that's not our only metering device. We also have thermostatic expansion valves. So let's take a look at those. So a thermostatic expansion valve or an electronic expansion valve, either way, we have more refrigerant in our condensing unit that ends up with a higher head pressure. So the head pressure is still gonna go up, that's the same. And as our head pressure goes up, our saturated temperature is also gonna go up, so that's the same. So the temperature difference between the refrigerant and the air is gonna be a much larger number and we call that condenser TD. Let's say it should be 15 and now maybe it's at 30. That's a much bigger TD, also called saturated temperature rise and also called condensing temperature over ambient or CTOA for short. But either way, that number is now going up. There's a bigger difference between the refrigerant temperature and the air temperature coming in. As we have more refrigerant in the condensing unit, we also end up with more subcooled liquid. So our subcooling starts to go up. So now instead of having a little bit of subcooled liquid, we have a whole lot of subcooled liquid. If we have a lot of subcooling, that gives me less and less space to have saturation. Now my saturation is having to change state at a much smaller area, which is what's also driving that higher saturated temperature. We're trying to reject all the heat and make that refrigerant change state from vapor to a liquid at a much smaller area because I've stacked the condenser full of liquid refrigerant. If all of this is liquid refrigerant, I have less room to change state. See how that's gonna be an issue. So those are all gonna be concerns. Now, as that refrigerant flows out of the condensing unit to our metering device, we talked about this metering device being a thermostatic expansion valve or an electronic expansion valve. Either way, the job of those metering devices under standard conditions is to maintain superheated vapor. So regardless of what's happening out there, they wanna have this much superheated vapor. And if we have that much superheated vapor, then I know the rest of this will be saturation. So I have the correct amount of superheat. Superheated vapor is good. My evaporator coil is going to be okay. That's what we want. So the right amount of superheat, the right amount of saturation, which also means my correct amount of temperature TD between the refrigerant and the air, which also means the correct amount of delta T between the air in and the air out. And also I'm gonna have approximately the right amount of suction pressure and suction saturated temperature. Whoa, wait a minute, everything inside is good? and it's only affecting the outside, absolutely correct. So this is what you're looking at with the TXV. So even if you overcharge a TXV, which is bad, your evaporator coil, assuming everything else is still correct, your TXV or EXV will try to maintain that evaporator coil, which is fantastic, it's awesome. But all the problems are still gonna be happening out here. As you have more and more pressure out here, it's gonna cause your compression ratio to go higher. So my compression ratio goes higher. I'm trying to stack that refrigerant to a higher temperature outside, and I'm having a whole lot more pressure, more vibrations, more work in the compressor. All of these issues are still bad for the system. So a lot of people that have TXVs, they will overcharge the system thinking they're not even concerned about this. So that's also why we look at subcooling first with a thermostatic expansion valve. So if I see that I have too much subcooled liquid, we know there's gonna be an issue. But see how we also still wanna check our superheat to know that it's doing its job. In this case, we're giving it too much subcooled liquid, but he's still doing his job. But I wanna check to see if he's doing that. So this is how an overcharged system would affect a thermostatic expansion valve.